Claudia, my dearest sister. I have been in Acre a week now, safe and in high spirits, but prepared for the worst. The men and women who have fed and sheltered me here also give me warning that the road to Masyaf is overrun by mercenaries and bandits, not native to this land. What this could mean, I dread to guess. When I first set out from Roma ten months ago, I did so with a single purpose, to discover what our father did not. In a letter written the year before my birth, he makes mention of a library hidden beneath the stones of Masyaf Castle. A sanctum full of invaluable wisdom. So what will I find when I arrive there? Who will greet me? A host of eager Templars, as I fear most strongly. Or nothing but the whistling of a cold and lonely wind. Masyaf has not been home to the Assassins for almost 300 years now. Can we still claim it for our own? Are we welcome there? Ah, uh, I am wary of this fight, Claudia. Not because I am tired, but because our struggle seems to move in one direction only, towards chaos. Today, I have more questions than answers. This is why I've come so far, to find clarity, to find the wisdom left behind by the great Altair so that I may better understand the purpose of our fight and my place in it. Should anything happen to me, Claudia, should my skills fail me or my ambition lead me astray, do not seek retribution or revenge in my memory, but fight to continue the search for truth so that all may benefit. My story is one of many thousands, and the world will not suffer if it ends too soon. I just want to say that I tried to use the PC version of this game for this video, but it kind of spazzed out, so we're using the Ezio collection. Assassin's Creed Revelations, in my opinion, is arguably the weakest of the Ezio trilogy, but that by no means makes it a bad game. In fact, it's a very good one. The game holds so many memories for me, being the conclusion to a trilogy that I absolutely adored. A game that has an incredible story, fun gameplay, and an immense soundtrack. So it's no surprise that Assassin's Creed Revelations is still gold. Let's just get cracking, shall we? The game starts off with Desmond waking up looking relatively hungover on an island in the Animus. Before long he runs into Subject 16, aka this random crackhead, who tells him that his mind is fucked and he needs to do bits to survive. So did I. He's a bit of a prick, but that doesn't really hold any bearing on the narrative. While walking along with Subject 16, Desmond suddenly remembers how to punch. Completely ruins the gravitas, but fair enough. It also appears as if Desmond is more hungover than I initially thought. That must have been one hell of a sesh. Yes, Desmond, after a dodgy night out, I too regret it. Right, okay, let's definitely blindly walk through this gate, that's a great idea. The next 30 seconds is just an intro listing all of the Ubisoft studios that worked on this game, as well as Ubisoft Quebec, who I simply refuse to believe had any part in it. Then of course you have this awesome intro which we've already seen in this video. Ezio kills a load of Templars, gets captured by Templars, nearly executed, but escapes at the last moment. Right, we ready to get into the gameplay? Cool. 
So for the first few moments of gameplay, we find ourselves following a ghost. But that's all right. I think he's friendly. So he's kind of like Casper, but a bit more stabby. For some reason, the first guard we come across is unarmed, which is a bit unusual considering we just escaped their capture and we just happen to be unarmed too. After a quick climb, we find ourselves conveniently coming across our weapons, which just happen to be laying about. Remember that it's the right hidden blade that's broken because that's important later. You know, if these guys took better care of the weapons, keeping them more secure, we wouldn't be cutting through them like I can't believe it's not butter. Obviously, we're going to have to loot the bodies, otherwise I can't justify killing them. As you can see, Altair's ghost is getting rather impatient. I'm a polite man, I don't want to annoy this dead fella, so why don't we continue along with his climbing set piece? Look at the weather, it must be absolutely freezing up here, yet Ezio being a hardened Italian man does not seem to care. Goodest of buys. Upon reaching the top of the keep, Ezio finds a statue which he promptly kicks off onto the square below, not knowing what's below it. Could have waited before you jump because you don't know what's down there, but conveniently enough it's water. Not gonna lie, I was browsing Twitter at this point, but still managed to kill this guy before he got hit off because I'm just that good. I can play Assassin's Creed with my eyes closed at this point. Of course, there are more Templars down here for me to kill, but that's not a problem for me. I am God. Of course, Ezio couldn't resist turning this man into a shish kebab. Hey, fancy trying our specialty? We call it dead man on a stick. Not gonna lie, it actually sounds quite tasty. Go home. Find work with honest men. Oh, I would love to leave this place. But these men, they will murder me if I try. Just a brief reminder that I killed those men. Pack your tools. I like how cryptic that is. Ezio doesn't say that he's going to help. For all this guy knows, he's just going to walk off. Next thing I know, I'm racing this guy to the exit. Maybe if you don't want to die, stick behind me. The assassin must not get his hands on that book. When we reach Leandros, we will escort him out of the village. You stay behind and make sure we're not followed. That guy just sounds like Cesare Borgia. When you've replayed Assassin's Creed games time and time again, the reuse of voice actors can actually be kind of jarring. Next thing you know, I'm gliding in over Masyaf village with a parachute. If these Templars were smart enough to look up, they'd probably see me. Oh well, long live dumb AI. It's kind of convenient. We're only a few minutes in and it's already thrown a tailing mission in my direction, which means that this is a true Assassin's Creed experience. Who is this woman and why does she want me dead? <laughs> Hey, maybe your troops would be more helpful if you weren't such a massive prick to them. None of you leave until the assassin is dead. Do you understand? See what I mean? That's a pathetic performance. Take better care of your employees, cocknose. I don't have much to say on this part, but listen to this amazing soundtrack. See what I mean? Absolutely jaw-dropping. Why did this guy just murder the soldier who just saved his life, even if it was only for a few more minutes? Now that's just a bit rude, isn't it? Excuse me, sir, but this carriage is now property of me. Why? Who else are you expecting? You know, back when this game came out, I found this part really difficult, but after a while, you kind of learn that you just have to ram these guys' carriages and avoid the dodgy bits of road and you'll be fine. It's not even that difficult. Why was I so retarded back in 2011? That must be the luckiest throw ever. Seriously, this goon deserves a promotion. Instead though, I find myself killing him. I 
This used to be so easy. It is easy, as this guy's clearly hard on hearing. You can see in the combat in this game that Ubisoft says, fuck it, let's just be as brutal as possible. Could it be that you are every bit as deadly as the legends say? Or am I in charge of an army of drunk swinging sticks? I'm gonna go with both. Right this way, Ezio. Nowhere left to run now. Not for me, and not for you. <laughs> Now, had they tried, they would have been able to make it past this gate, but they didn't, because this guy's an asshole. <laughs> I'm healed. He's gonna die. God damn these bastard riflemen. I know I'm supposed to ignore you guys, but I'm gonna kill you anyways. What is it with this guy and murdering his friends? What does it take to kill you, eh? Why will you not die? Don't you ever stop howling. Notice how he kills him with the broken hidden blade. That's got to be a painful way to go. It's also funny considering this guy's stature that Ezio just walks up to him and stabs him. Shortly after Ezio's writing a book, Hey man, whatever works for you. My dearest sister, today I killed 30 million Templars. It was a good day. Here comes another one of those scenes that I'm just going to have to show you and say nothing, so bear with me. Magnificent sight. It is a work in progress. No city in Europa has a skyline quite like this. Well, to be precise, that is Europa. That is Asia. Ah. Some borders even the Ottomans cannot move. Very few. You are Italian by the sound of it. But your outfit is not. Have you been traveling long? See, si. I'm all told them. I left Rome a 12 months ago, looking for inspiration, and that search brought me here. Yeah, that was a nod that says I smell bullshit. When I was a child, my father told me stories about the fall of Constantinople. You must mean the conquest of Constantinople. I suppose the moral of any story matches the temper of the man telling it. That we can agree on. Guzel! Constantine is a city for all kinds and creeds. <laughs> Students like me or uh, travelers such as yourself. You can tell he wants to say bullshitters because he knows that Ezio is not a mere traveler. Hoshgaldin Kardashian. Unless the legend is a lie, you are the man I long to meet. Renowned master and mentor. It's your auditori, the... La, la, la. Had he said that in 2019, he would have offended at least 60,000 people and started a full-on Twitter war. I wish I was alive in the 16th century. I feel as if it would be more suited to my humour and also my desire to gut people. They nearly destroyed this city. Fewer than 40,000 people before the fall, living in squalor. Ein and Erle, and now 300,000 men and women by the last count. We have done our part. We made this city strong again. We rebuilt it. Byzantines do not see it that way. They just cause trouble every chance they get. Well, they were the most dedicated people to a conversation that I've ever seen. Obviously, it wouldn't be a classic Assassin's Creed Revelations walk-along section without me pickpocketing everyone along the way. <laughs> I fucking love Revelations. Between the Templars and the Ottomans, you must stay busy. Ezio, I barely have time to polish my blade. So did you follow us or are you just hoping that we took the route? I swear the NPC AI in this game is fucking clapped. You know what, this screen grab is pretty nice looking. I'm gonna keep it. No, no. Watch. Byzantium is dead, as are you. 
Jesus Christ, this is a face that's seen some shit. So we arrive at the Assassin's HQ and turn around, there's a bunch of folk who just want me dead. Okay, so we are now sent to buy new armor from the shop around the corner from the Assassin's HQ. So that is exactly what we do. Praise the heavens! We feared we had lost our mentor to the vices of the big city. I literally went around the corner, you cocky bastard. I was gone less than a minute. Revelations does this a few times, where the lines don't quite make sense in the game, but they kinda do in the novel. It's you. Where is your hook blade? Oh yeah, that Ottoman invention that I should somehow magically have. My hook blade? You've never seen one? No, as a matter of fact, I fucking have not. I grew up using these. Hmm. Show me how it works. After a quick tutorial on how to utilize the hook blade, we get this magical piece of dialogue. The standard Ottoman hook blade has two parts, you see. The hook and the blade. <laughs> Next thing we know, we're climbing the Galata Tower, which is a lot taller than it actually is in reality. It's like when producing Assassin's Creed Revelations, the Turkish government contacted them and said, we're a bit self-conscious of a dick size, can you make it bigger? Well, if I ever go to Turkey, I'm instantly going to get arrested now, so that's new. Welcome to Constantinia, Ezio. The crossroads of the world. Many generations of men have ruled this city, but they have never subdued her. She always bounces back. It seems a fine place to call home. It is. Race you to the bottom. Sorry, I can't take you up on this offer for a race because I need to synchronize the viewpoint. Brothers in Roma would like this. Just give credit where it is due. Yusuf, Chabuk, Buri again. An attack on two fronts, Galata and the Grand Bazaar. Ah, uh, yes, tower defense. My favorite thing ever. I don't care what you think about tower defense, it's worth it just to bear witness to that. Why are four league guards working for the Byzantines? What's going on? Well, we made short work of the battering ram. Ezio, come meet my new friends. I hate to break it to you, Yusuf, but you're not good at this friend-making business. You fight like a man late for his own wedding. See, by about 25 years. Ah, yes, I sure do love bombing things. This is another of our many dens, taken by Templars, as you can see. Somewhere among this rabble is a Templar captain. Kill him, then climb the tower and light their signal fire. So basically what I've been doing in Brotherhood, but again. Yeah, I could have figured this one out on my own. It's me! Hello, kind of sirs, it is time for a bit of die. Imagine this guy's thought when he clocked this random bloke flying in towards him with a parachute. You know, that was easy. It's almost like I've done this before.
so there you have it. Assassin's Creed Revelations is still gold. This is a game that I absolutely adore. I love this game to bits. I've played this game so many times that I can't even count them. And if you haven't played it and the Assassin's Creed games before it, then I highly recommend it. I know it gets shaky further on down the line, but the first four games are 100% solid. One can be a bit repetitive, but they're all worth your time and I highly recommend them. So I guess that concludes this episode of Still Gold. Thank you all for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Be sure to go ahead, leave a like, subscribe, share the channel with your friends and all that wonderful stuff. And maybe if you want to help out the channel even further, maybe consider becoming a patron and get all the extra content over there as well. I'm aiming to create a fun little community over there and from $1 a month you get loads of cool stuff. Or at least that's kind of what I think. If you can't, don't feel forced to because I appreciate anyone anyway. But without Patreon, these videos wouldn't be possible. I mean, most would. I'm on about still gold, you know. Anyways, that's enough promotion. I will see you all very soon with another video at some point.